Bum, 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 bum. I try not to film too many maintenance videos because I know a lot of folks uh, come here for action and entertainment, but actually this is a big part of the hobby, working on your uh, trucks and doing the maintenance. And you know, if I neglected that part of the hobby, of uh, showing people what it was, I'd, I'd feel like I was kind of misleading you because a lot of vehicles, RC vehicles, need a lot of maintenance. Uh, to keep them running all the time and holy heck i do a lot of maintenance <laughs> This is the front portion of a Tonka dump truck, the old metal version. Now this isn't my Tonka dump truck that uh, I have that's radio controlled. Uh, this is actually a different model I had for a conversion back in the day. And I figured, you know, if I just had it sitting around, why not put it on my one tent scale, uh, six by six, two speed transmission Blackwell uh, from RC four wheel drive. Now this model has actually been discontinued at the time of this filming. Uh, so I wanted to pick one up and get it in my possession before they were all gone. So all I did was cut the top off with a little bit of the Tonka frame. Uh, that includes this, you know, like fake gas tank, uh, but it still looks good. And this on the back, if you look close, I'll just lift it up. This is actually attached, uh, but it is a Tamiya trailer. I just made it shorter. I cut it off right here. Hacksaw straight across. Reattached the front um, uh, plate and painted it black. Now, painting it black was just to go with the frameworks of the truck itself. See here, you can see how I've done this. I'll just lift this up. Can this, is this released? Yep, I undid it earlier. Check it out. So this is just the piece from the Tonka dump truck. Vintage. Yes, I could certainly mount some lights on it. Eventually I will, but I just wanted to experiment because these wheel wells work so well with this size of rock crusher tire. Uh, and of course these tires actually come with the Rockwell uh, six by six. It's ready to run. Uh, I picked it up, you know, it's way more expensive than the usual trucks. At the time I purchased this, it was 800 bucks, but it did not come with the sound kit that I installed. Uh, I did that uh, after I got it home. Uh, but it did come with everything else, including the transmission, which is all done up two speed, all of the electronics, all of the servos, and away you go. So I had a good time. I did a running video with it the other day. I hooked up the diesel sound kit, of course, because I wanted a diesel truck. Uh, and the V8 diesel sound is pretty darn good. But one of the things I noticed, I'll just flip this around. It's fairly heavy, not too heavy, but you know, it's definitely got some weight to it, which makes me feel better about spending that much money. Um, this came with a 35 turn brushed motor. Sorry for all the dirt, but that's just on these huge treaded tires. I didn't bother cleaning it off from the trail run the other day. Uh, the 35 turn is pretty awesome. You know, it does give me some speed, but for the slow crawling that I want, I definitely want to put in, I thought I was going to put in a 55, but I'm actually going to go just 10 turns more to a 45 and see if that kind of reduces my heat issue. Uh, I also want to adjust uh, the travel of this arm for the two speed transmission because I found that it wasn't shifting properly, but I think it just has to do with the radio setup, right? So I want to confirm that. Uh, and I also think that would help because I think I was in high gear for that whole video I was doing. I didn't really see a low gear setting. The other thing people ask me about is this awesome looking brake disc on the front. That actually came with the kit, or not the kit, but the RTR. Same on the back. Uh, you know, full scale um, four by fours and off-road trucks usually use a single disc to brake an axle instead of two different brake discs anyway, right? And you'll also notice the low uh, diffs. Nothing to really get hung up there. Right, that's another thing that attracted me to this model is that it wasn't a low hanging diff cover. Anyway, let's uh, get this transmission out and I wanna switch out that motor. So I need to remove the transmission. 
four bolts on the bottom, four screws. They actually screw right into the transmission housing. Back these off. One, two on one side, three, four on the other. Well, there's nothing more satisfying than having a well-maintained radio control truck or car or anybody that's in the radio control hobby is with me when you know you have to do maintenance to keep things running well. If you don't, things just start to tend to fall apart. Now look at this, even on this plate, I went through all of these tires before I ran it. These are all individual nuts that had to be tightened. Uh, and I've gone through and tightened most of them. But look at this, even after a run, we can see it's a little bit loose. So I'm gonna try and tighten this up just while I'm here. Ah, that one could use a little bit of Loctite and some longer screws, check that out. Maybe I can drill it a little bit further, put in longer screws, cause that actually is fairly loose, but it's tightened back up now that I've done it. Not a big deal. Flip it over. Let's see, Mr. Transmission. I see on this side that I've got a zip tie holding the uh, motor wires in place. Does this just lift out? It does. There we are. Shall I take off the arm? I think I will, but which side will I take it off of? Uh, servo? Why not? What I'm talking about is this shifting arm that's right here for the transmission. This is the actual servo right here. I know you guys can't see it, but well, you can. You can do that right there. I'll actually just unhook it right from the servo itself. There we are. I can reset that later on, no problem. Instead of leaving the screw in the servo horn, I'm just going to re-thread it into the servo. Just keeps it easier for me uh, not to lose it. And then of course I've got two drive shafts. Now my normally I could slide them out in other vehicles, but oh oh perfect. I could do it in this one as well. Alright, so we've got some oil from the transmission uh, coming out there, just from when it heats up. Here, have a look. You can see it's all shiny on top, uh, but at least it keeps it well lubricated, especially when you're going through mud or water or anything like that. But for now, I'm going to remove it so it doesn't make everything goopy. I'm going to have a look on the other side here. Normally they had a plate that you could remove, and I think they still do, but this looks like it's a servo plate. So, hmm, do I need to remove the servo before I get to the inside, which I can undo the pinion gears? I think so, so we might as well experiment as we go, right? Um, just looking, here's one screw. I see one screw right behind here as well. And okay, so we're gonna have to take the servo out. Now I'll just slide the servo out of the way. There's the plate I'm talking about. Now behind this plate, is there an opening? I guess we're gonna find out here together. So these ones are silver screws. The other ones I just took out of the servo were black uh, with a silver nut. This is exactly why I pair things together. Aha, and it is revealed. So I can see the two motor screws on the inside right from behind. Just gonna keep these little uh, screws for the plate together and two more screws to mount the motor. There we are, one pretty much all the way out. And I know it's just nothing but my fingers, sorry guys. There we are. Da -da -da. Out comes the motor. So this is a good 35 turn motor. I can use this a little bit later on. It does have uh, the pinion gear on there. So those that are uh, changing out or swapping motors, always remember to take off your pinion gear uh, or else you won't have a pinion unless you supply it to yourself later. Not an opinion, a pinion. <laughs> and you know me, I always use my Tekken products. This is a 45 turn hand wound. What does hand wound mean? 
Well, it certainly means that somebody sat with the inside, there's wires wrapped around in here that create the, well, that help the current flow to the magnets. Uh, and uh, so somebody has actually hand wound these, which actually creates more torque. So that's why I've gone with a hand wound instead of just a regular uh, wind on a 55. Uh, I want to see the difference. So no big deal. 45 turn competition crawler motor. Awesome. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to do the reverse. I'm going to find the um, flat spot on the shaft of the motor. It's going to kind of balance it up so everything's flush at the end. Let's see here. You can see right there. And I'll just kind of turn it right here. Not over tight. Oh, my battery's done. Thank you for letting me know. Ooh. Okay, you can let them. There we go. Listen to this. There's a lot of magnet there. That's nice. A lot of resistance. Brand new, right out of the, right out of the package. Ah. <laughs> All right. So back in it goes. We are gonna have to solder it. I might as well do that right now. Why not? Right. Get all these screws out of the way. Sorry, all that dirt. Now, normally when I'm in the field, I need something uh, that if I'm going to solder, I, you know, I can't have a plug in. Somebody actually suggested this to me a long time ago. You'll all love the name Power Probe. It looks like a Power Probe. <laughs> power Probe is actually a very, very decent butane uh, soldering gun. I got this uh, online at a fairly popular site. Um, you can find it. I'm just not here to promote anything. Just showing you what I use. Uh, backing up so you can see. Got power on one side, negative on the other. Just gonna let this heat up for a few seconds. Doesn't take too long at all. It's quite a nice little kit actually. Dun, dun, dun. I always find a little bit of solder on the tip of your soldering iron. Uh, helps you melt the other solder a little quicker for those folks that are just learning how to solder. Okay, focusing. There we are. That flux cleans and helps it stick, just like that. So now I have two motor tabs, black, red. Okay, I'm just going to attach the red side, heating up that tab. Heating up the wire, letting the solder melt together. There we go, looks nice. I always like to have a nice smooth solder point. You know, nothing like clumpy, sharp solder to help rip up your wires and whatnot if you're not careful later. There we are. Maybe just a tad more. Could have got that wire a bit hotter. It was a bit of a cold solder, but perfect, just like so. There. And get some more solder on this iron. Or gun, or whatever you guys would like to call it. <laughs> Power probe. Here we are. Heating up the tab, heating up the wire. Getting them together. And letting it quickly dry. Well, dry, cool off, liquefy, solidify, whatever you guys would like to call it. There you go. Good enough. And off goes the soldering gun. And I'll give you a look at those soldering points. Pretty standard, simple stuff. Not too messy, not too clumpy. Uh, I got one little wire sticking out there, but it's fine. So I don't have anything shorting out. Okay, time to remount on the inside of the transmission. Okay, I already have one of the screws placed on the end of my uh, driver, just so I can have it ready. On this motor, there's two mounting holes, so you're gonna to wanna to figure out exactly where it mounts up on the inside of the transmission. And you don't wanna have that thread uh, or the uh, pinion mesh too tight. The other thing I notice is with this particular pinion, just when I lined it up now, I wanna make sure that the gear master is actually lining up. So it looks like it had to come out about two millimeters. That's why the sh motor shaft is extra long, of course, so you can place the pinion in the right spot. There we go, looking nice. Check that out on the inside, not too bad. Uh, and lining up those mounting holes. Okay, so here we go with the motor mount again. 
the plate for the servo. Uh, and these were the silver screws. Often I'll say it out loud, just like you guys may have heard in the video here. Uh, once I say the color of the screw out loud as I'm undoing it or, you know, removing it, I usually, my mind is able to tell me, hey, that's where you put the silver one, that's where you put the, the titanium ones. Pretty straightforward. All right, so I've secured the motor wires here, and what I'm going to do is attach these drive shafts uh, while I slide the transmission into place. That way I don't have to remove it from either transmission uh, shaft there. Come on, get in there. Slide this back, get this in there. I'm all hands here, guys. Sorry, got to get in there to see what's going on. And done. Perfect. All right, got the transmission lined up on the bottom. Popping one screw in there just to help set it properly. Not too tight, just a hand turn. I know that's there, there, and number four. Just kind of do the opposite corner here so it's starting to apply even pressure. Not bad, hand turn. I don't want to strip it out. I don't think I will, but you know, you never know until you do. So I'd rather just kind of lightly tighten it down and then go around and I'll give them a quarter turn after. Here we go, quarter turn. This one in quarter turn there we go and finito flipping it over looking good here's the volume for uh the sound kit transmission wise so i figured out if you push it all the way in that's the high gear and pulling it all the way back come on there we go low gear so i just need this steering horn to go back further so i'm going to put it I still have to line everything up with the radio, right? I'm not just going to eye, like I'll eyeball it for right now, but I won't just leave it like this. I'll make sure everything's squared up. But at least I know now that which direction it had to go. Nice, not too bad. And let's see, let's just go to the end anyway. I should turn it on just to have a look with the radio. All right, here we go. It's the radio that came RTR with it. Just some RC four wheel drive has. I noticed in the bottom it does actually say RC four wheel drive. Takes four batteries, not too bad. Uh, extra, this is a rocker switch I use for the sound kit. Came right on the radios with this truck. Uh, and of course, there is the transmission switch right here. Here is a Gen Zase 4200 short pack. I don't know if they offer these anymore, but I have a few of them. I, you know, I made sure to bulk up while I had them. Uh, they work well. Last not a too long, or not not a too bad of a time. Probably about an hour, which is shocking. Um, but one of the things I noticed is with the sound kit uh, and these servos, I need a better BEC in here, which is just a power regulator, really. <laughs> put it in simple terms. So let's plug this in. I wouldn't mind having a look and uh, changing the servo arm or calibrating it more likely. Ugh, there we are. Bum, 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 bum. Here, watch, I'll show you how I start it. Uh, back it up. Something like this and it's ignition. <laughs> I'm just turning it down. So here, I'll show you again. That's air brake, ignition, down, up, and then back down. That keeps it started. And the sound is coming from back here. I could use a stronger servo, that's for sure. And I see that one of my links while I've been working has actually popped out. Let me see here, on this side. So the link, where would it go? Up top, looks like I lost a screw and I hadn't even uh, noticed that. That's all right. That's what it's up on the bench for anyway. Bum, 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 bum. Come on. I'll fix that in a minute. Just want to keep on what I was doing of centering out this horn. All right, so battery's there. And if I want to look at the transmission shift, now I haven't attached it to this actual transmission shaft yet. I just wanted to see how far it had to go. 
Okay, so that should put it in the uh, far gear, the low gear, pardon me, in the far position. Tighten that up. I don't want to strip this screw out. Nice, let's see if that works. And then if we roll it, let's see here. Oh, so I got to re uh, reverse, either reverse the throttle or reverse the wires on there. Cause now when I push forward, it goes in reverse. That's very normal. Cause the polarity is reversed there. No big deal. I can switch the reverse. What about this? There we go. That's neutral position. Not bad. Right on. Move this out of the way. Now let's see if I can do this with one hand. So rolling, transmission shift. There we go. Good. Got it shifting properly. All right. Good. Next for me to fix that inside link. So I can turn this off because we know it's working and calibrated properly. I'll have to find a better, better neutral position for one of these digital servos there. I hate when servos keep buzzing because it makes me think that they're working too hard. Um, and in a lot of cases they are. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, digital uh, servos always chatter anyway. So that's very normal. I'm just trying to, I know you guys can't really see, but I'm just trying to work in this link. So let me do that and I'll get her done. The last turn of the cross wrench wheel is now in place. So the link is fixed. Uh, wheel is back on. The transmission has been adjusted. So it now shifts into low gear, which was causing heat in my th uh, 35 turn motor that I had from RC four wheel drive only because I was doing some serious slow crawling in high gear. Now I could have probably just adjusted the EPA uh, on the radio, but I didn't. I didn't really notice until the end of the run, but switching it out to a higher torque motor is certainly going to help, especially at a 45. Plus it's still going to give me the wheel speed. So eh, I'm good to go from there. Uh, let's make sure all the wires are properly in place. I probably need a good cleaning of this Tonka truck lid. And I would bolt it in right there, but only after I had the wires. I got to resituate everything now. Hold on. This big plug, this big, uh, I should just put a, like some loom over that or something, like some braided, braided loom so I could have it protected. So it fits like that, kind of, goes a little bit more forward. And when it's screwed down in place, I can still access um the battery but it really it just kind of lifts up on a hinge point right because i can get to it that much so i don't mind because everything's covered up i can also reach on the inside check this out uh where is the oh my bad it's on this side see here's the on off button it's still pretty new to me right right there so if it sits there dun dun dun, dun. And then I had this put back in place. There. Now you basically kind of understand what this vehicle is all about. Let's just kind of pan back for you guys. There, so I had to do some maintenance. I figured you guys would want to watch along. Ta-da! Uh, I still have a bit to do. I'll clean it up and kind of you know, make it look a little bit better. Maybe I'll have some drop cloth in here, but I actually like the fact that I'm able to turn it on and off right from here, so. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it kind of gives you some inspiration and ideas to kind of look outside the box. I made this whole body and backplate by pieces I already had laying around. Uh, so until next time, I'll see you in the next RC adventure.